Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Franklin. Thank you so much for coming out and sharing your morning with us. We really appreciate it. We hope you got a picture with the mayor in front of the DeLorean, and we hope that you put that on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and tag the city. We're at City of Franklin. And on Instagram, we're at City of Franklin TN. So please post those photos. Um, we are happy that you're here with us today. We want to recognize all the Franklin aldermen that showed up today and supporting the mayor. If you'd like to take a stand and wave to everyone and show you that you're here. I know Brandy Blanton's here and Alderman Berger and Scott Speedy. And then I know County Mayor Rogers Anderson is here. And if there's any other county commissioners, please stand. We also, uh, are there any state representatives here today? I'm not sure. We also want to give a round to all our city employees back there that came out and put up the wonderful booths and to educate our citizens more about what they do every day. I'm Melissa Ryerson. I'm the communications manager, and I'm happy to be here today, too. And I'm happy to introduce Dr. Kenneth Hill. He's going to lead us in the prayer. He's from Shorter Chapel AME Church. Let us bow our heads. Good morning, God. Good morning, citizens of City of Franklin and the county. We thank you for the many blessings that our community has. I pray for those who are in office who, that govern this community and county, that they may make wise and godly decisions which are always in the interests of the community. Strengthen them in their leadership. Support them in your grace. Keep them open to your justice and use them as instruments to foster unity, reconciliation, and peace in our communities and neighborhoods. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Dr. Hill. And we also want to thank the Franklin Breakfast Rotary for this wonderful breakfast. And we have the incoming president with the Franklin Breakfast Rotary, Greg Lewis, to lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Let us join together uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance to honor our country and our city and our home. Thank you, Greg. And now on with State of the City. Great Scott, I did it. <laughs> Eric. Oh, hey, Mayor, you got my message. Thanks for coming. I got your message, but I would have been here sooner, but I couldn't find my skateboard. Well, hey, Mayor, I know what you want to talk about at the State of the City. You know, growth, transportation, infrastructure, affordable housing, all these things our town is dealing with right now. Well, you know what? Uh, Franklin was dealing with this 30 years ago. Just like when all this was farmland, as far as the eye can see. Really? People were having the same problem then as we are today? Yes, that and lots more. I know. I saw it with my own eyes. How? Well, I built a time machine. You got a DeLorean just like the movie? Precisely. Let's go. All right. Let's take a ride. Settings, 1988. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, my name is Wink Martindale, and I'll be your back-in-time tour guide. So if you're ready, let's go. 
Back in 1988, George Bush defeated Michael Dukakis for the presidency of the United States. The first major computer virus infects computers connected to the Internet. And you can see Back to the Future replays at the Franklin Theater for $2. Franklin's Main Street certainly wasn't as pretty, but big changes were on the way. Back then, a brand new home in a new neighborhood called Buckingham Park would cost you about $150,000. Let's start our Franklin journey back in time in January 1988. The mayor recommended a moratorium on annexations and rezonings. <laughs> yes, folks, some people didn't like growth even back then either. Since 1980, Franklin had annexed more than 9,000 acres into its corporate limits. The mayor said enough land already exists in city zones to satisfy things for a while. City services are not adequate for the vacant land recently annexed. But later that month, the moratorium didn't McFly. Franklin Alderman abandoned it in a three to five vote. One alderman said a halt on rezonings would discourage industrial and commercial development in the city, which provides a vital tax base. Growth continued to challenge city leaders. Consultants told them the next 22 years were going to cost close to $200 million to be spent on schools, roads, wastewater, and more. The consultant's report said, while growth offers greater economic opportunity, it also brings a greater burden in maintaining the quality of life. They estimated the population to be 57,500 by 2010. Uh, they weren't far off, were they? Affordable housing was on the minds of city leaders back then as well. In 1990, then chairwoman of the House and Human Needs Committee said many low and moderate income employees of local businesses and industries faced an acute shortage of available homes in the $45,000 to $75,000 price range. City officials suggested establishing a nonprofit corporation to coordinate efforts. Looks like the need for affordable housing continues to this day. Back in the late 80s, citizens were steamed over roads and traffic too. With a new mall being built on farmland in Cool Springs, city leaders in Franklin and Brentwood needed roadways to accommodate the coming traffic and new highway access built off I-65. Close to the same time in the early 90s, Streetscape was breaking ground on Franklin's Main Street. Tennessee Governor Ned McWhirter was there with a box of Nilla wafers in hand to kick off the project. Main Street was torn up for months and shoppers had to enter stores through the back door. Some folks didn't like the change and thought things should have stayed the same. <laughs> Boy, if they had social media back then, city leaders would have gotten an earful. Thank you for joining me for this trip back in time. And by the way, Mr. Mayor, good luck on your State of the City address. I'm sure you'll do fine. <laughs> Thanks, Wink. Wow, that was some ride. Boy, that Wink Martindale, you know, he looks exactly the same as he, he did back then. Wonder what kind of time machine he has. Isn't that the truth? You know, I've learned a lot from the decisions that were made 30 years ago. And, you know, I can't wait to tell everyone what we saw. Can we set the time for tomorrow morning for State of the City? Huh, Eureka! A, a time machine that goes into the future. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that before? Let's give it a shot. But before we go, you might take that ridiculous thing off. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Thank you for everybody for coming out and taking this trip back in time with us today. What we want to do with the state of the city this year is look back 30 years ago and look at today and identify those parallels that exist with what was happening then and now in growth, in transportation, infrastructure, and housing. You know, the video showed us that the same issues I just mentioned were happening back 30 years ago. And if we analyze what was happening 30 years ago up to the present, fortunately, 
Our city leaders made good decisions that kept us on track to be the city we are today. You know, we are a city that has an X factor, some people say, and I don't know what the X factor is. And I, for one, do not want to see that X factor lost. So, all right, so we had the opportunity to talk to some folks that were here 30 years ago and very much engaged in critical decisions that have shaped what Franklin is today. We're going to start this morning hearing from Rudy Jordan. Rudy was the Heritage Foundation director a number of years ago and very engaged in bringing major changes to Main Street. You know, Rudy wasn't from around here, but she had some big ideas that made a huge impact. Let's hear from Rudy. Main Street didn't just happen overnight. It was a lot of work and a lot of convincing. Downtown was a plethora of pool halls, discount stores, secondhand shops. It was really a mess with broken sidewalks, some wonderful merchants, but they were struggling. The Chamber of Commerce had put metal awnings and wrought iron supports all up and down Main Street so that you could walk under a canopy. They wanted it to look like the mall, so I always made the joke that they mauled, a pun intended, Main Street. The buildings were slip covered in vinyl sidings so that you couldn't see the windows on the upper stories. And uh, it was a general mess. They covered the transoms and in some cases even secondary doors. So we went back through and we did a demonstration with one of the buildings downtown. So we repointed the brick, we painted the building, we put in awnings, and we just generally did what needed to be done to that building to demonstrate to other property owners what could happen. Using design, historic design guidelines got the buildings the way they look today. And then we focused on the economic impact and bringing people in here. People were getting it, but I did have several merchants that say, you know, I went out of business because you guys, or you in particular, have forced this on us. So there's always pain when you grow. I would go to Margaret Martin and say, what have I done wrong? And she would say, you're a newcomer. People don't like change, but it's exactly what we need. Thank you, Rudy. All right, Mayor, uh, reflect a little bit from your perspective the impact that Streetscape has had and what's on the horizon. Well, first of all, I want to recognize my wife, Linda, because <laughs> those scenes that you saw from Main Street uh, years ago, that was the Franklin that Linda grew up in. And Linda's right here, and I always appreciate her support. <laughs> But this is one of those major moments in Franklin's history when Franklin changed forever because of the streetscape project on Main Street. And now we, we're a destination where other communities come and look to see what we've done to our downtown. Uh, it's been a huge economic generator for us. It's been a great investment for us. One of our current projects that uh, is being paved as we speak is uh, Hillsborough Road, and we're finishing that project up. And that project is going to offer improved connectivity. Of course, it's going to be a good-looking project and a nice uh, entry into our city. Uh, but also, there are other things besides the uh, beauty of the project. It also has a lot to do with the infrastructure, such as water, sewer, stormwater in particular, and also undergrounding utilities. And I might mention that uh, Franklin Road, we plan on bidding that in 2019, which will be uh, our next streetscape project. So uh, Eric, when you took this job, <laughs> uh, did you ever imagine what would be happening in downtown Franklin now? Well, we, we've sure seen a lot, and there's major redevelopment happening right now. Uh, you can't miss it. There's those huge cranes that are bringing uh, Franklin or uh, Harpeth Square to Franklin. Uh, that, of course, is a 120-room boutique hotel. Uh, apartment condo units and, and retail and restaurant space as well. That's a $100 million investment. You also see the re redevelopment on the square, the first Tennessee building now uh, called 
231 Public Square is taking shape, will open up later this year, and bring the first rooftop restaurant and bar to Franklin overlooking the square. Uh, this last week, you saw the Dotson's uh, restaurant come down, and that will be a redevelopment with um, commercial and retail space and office space as well along our riverfront. So what you see there especially is bringing some of the energy and activity from the rest of Main Street from east of the square to the river uh, that, that has really not been present for many years. So that's exciting and de development and major, major investment in our community. So what's been the reaction of... <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. I think when we look at the reaction of the community to the things we're doing in here, we have a number of ways to measure that. But one that we got recognition for last year was through the National Research Center who recognized the City of Franklin with the Voice of the People Award. Eric, can you kind of go over the survey and also uh, this national award that we received? So we did a citizen survey and we're one of over 500 communities that do a similar survey across the country. It's cities uh, with populations from under a thousand to over a million. And you ask questions about uh, the community's perception of quality of life and different other aspects. And, and we ranked very, very high in that. That's why we received this award. Uh, and so just a couple, couple key takeaways. 97% uh, of our residents rated quality of life in Franklin as excellent or good. That ranked uh, in the top 10. We also saw top uh, 20 rankings in our services, quality of city services, our economic vitality ranked number one, uh, confidence in city government ranked number eight. Uh, that's all really positive feedback and we're honored to receive that. But we also heard concerns from our citizens in the survey, especially around the impact of growth, looking specifically at traffic, congestion, and housing affordability. About the same time as Streetscape, the uh, mall at Cool Springs was being developed, or the Cool Springs Galleria. And we saw in the video that the face of the city was changing pretty significantly and very quickly. Bob Martin was the planning director at that time, and we were able to sit down and get his perspective on what was happening. Well, the economy of Williamson County literally changed overnight when the mall opened. Prior to the coming of the mall, the city had collected a million dollars in sales tax the previous year. The year after the mall opened, the mall itself brought in a million dollars in sales tax to the city. There were three locations cited for uh, the mall. Two of them actually were in Brentwood and the third was in Franklin. The city board of Mayor, uh, Mayor and Alderman also had a, uh, a gentleman's agreement with the city commissioners of Brentwood that uh, the city of Brentwood would not annex south of Moore's Lane. They did. And after that, the mayor of Franklin, uh, Dr. Jeff Bethurum, came to me and said, Bob, we're going to annex everything else. Uh, the agreement is over. And that's how the thousands of acres south of Moore's Lane uh, began to be annexed into the city of Franklin, uh, <coughs> adjacent to the city of Brentwood. And on any given night, there were literally thousands of acres to be annexed and zoned. Uh, I had one of my planners to ask me, how in the world are we gonna, what are we gonna do? And I said, absolutely nothing. We're gonna wait till they get through with all of this, and then we're gonna plan what's left. And that's what we did. So Bob makes a great point about planning, that you, know, you, you focus on it, and you implement it, and you work your plan. And that's what we've been doing for several years, looking long-term, thinking about our needs, and thinking about what fits, fits Franklin's character long-term. Plans like Envision Franklin, our land use plan. Franklin Forward, which is our strategic plan. Uh, Invest Franklin is dedicated funding for growth impacts for, for infrastructure and operations, a, a dime on the property tax. We have long-term plans for parks, our comprehensive transportation plan, our water needs with the integrated water plan, and starting just this week uh, is a regional effort on the southern corridor looking at transit and transportation needs linking Williamson County and uh, Metro Nashville. So good planning is what has been a key to Franklin's success in the past and will be in the future and is key to quality of life. But Mayor, we don't just plan, we do. No, we don't just plan. We put our money where our mouth is. And in the fa last five years, we've invested 
$170 million on projects for the city of Franklin. And 84% of that investment has been on transportation related projects. Looking forward, over the next five years, we're gonna double that amount on road projects and other projects that the city of Franklin will be doing. In addition, there's a lot of other important projects that are occurring in Franklin. You know, our community wants to be better connected and we're building sidewalks on 96 West, that's in the plan. You see the one on 96 East that continues to progress. Mack Hatcher Parkway, uh, we hope to get that bid a little later this year. We have McEwen Phase 4 from Cool Springs to Wilson Pike that we're excited that that project continues to move forward at, at a higher than expected pace. Columbia Avenue, uh, we've made some important decisions there. It's a fully funded project. And I, I need to mention a new city hall. You know, each year we uh, rank our capital projects as a board and uh, we've seen that the new city hall project has continued to percolate up that list. You know, it's time for us to go ahead and make some decisions on the future of a new city hall. Uh, we have some money in the budget for that. Uh, the city hall that you see is now the ugliest building on the square. <laughs> also, it's probably the most expensive building in the entire city to maintain. So it is time that we look for improving that property and also giving our employees a better place to work and work more efficiently. So the bottom line with all these investments is really fostering economic vitality. Uh, when you look at that track record, it's, it's impressive. Uh, this last year in 2012, Williamson County led the country in job growth in three out of four quarters, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's about opportunity for our citizens, for our kids, and for our grandkids. And, and that really matters. That changes lives. So let's talk about how we connect with our citizens. That's really a critical part, too, to understand what our citizens are feeling, what their concerns are, uh, what they're happy about. And social media is a major linkage that we have in the city of Franklin. We've really cultivated that as a way to connect and hear from our citizens. Uh, you look at our following. We've got uh, over 34,000 on Facebook. We've got more than 26,000 on Twitter, 7,000 in, in Instagram. Uh, and it's a way we engage our citizens. Public meetings are well attended and broadcast live on things like Facebook Live and on Franklin TV. You can see what's going on in your community and find ways to engage and tell us what you think. And what you think matters. We hear the concerns. We hear some grumbling from time to time. And it's factored absolutely in what we do. Let's, let's hear how some of those concerns have, have played out over the years. Jim East, who uh, covered a lot of Franklin public meetings and activities uh, over many years, let's hear from Jim about how that uh, reflects in his experience. You know, the old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, they've changed drastically, but they're the same. The problems are the same. Traffic, uh, accessibility, getting around. The complaints came from were longtime Franklin residents and Franklin natives. And they had seen it suddenly burgeon from a small town in the late 70s, small city in the late 70s, of four or 5,000. It started, city officials started annexing and people started moving here. And, and so it gradually or fairly quickly began to grow. And people were coming from California and other places where it cost a lot more to live. They would sell a modest home there that cost them a million dollars or whatever and have a big chunk of change left over and come here and buy way up. They could buy a lot more house here for less money. Then the people who came were, were used to the things, that the amenities that were available where they lived. So they wanted those, and that uh, uh, drew some uh, growth, natural growth, uh, anyway. The good side of that to most people, particularly older Franklin people, was the shopping that it caused and the sales tax revenue that it generated. There are just all kinds of amenities here now that uh, have been spurred by this, in an effort to cover all the things that people like where they live and work. 
Well, I think it's important to maybe talk about housing now. Uh, this has been a hot subject uh, already this year in our board meetings, but I think that we need to kind of analyze where we're at with it. Uh, you know, we have a number of people that do housing in Franklin, uh, and I'm speaking primarily of affordable and workforce housing. Of course, we have a hard bargain. We have a, uh, the uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity, Stephen Murray's organization, uh, community, community Housing Partnership. But one that I think we've overlooked is the Franklin Housing Authority, who's been doing a great job with redeveloping their property. And with uh, a pretty uh, small investment from the city of about $475,000, all those groups have built about 150 uh, affordable and workforce housing. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we've pushed is some opportunity to develop some type of pilot program that would encourage uh, our builders uh, to build more workforce housing, which is a critical need. Uh, this past year's budget, we had $100,000, and our upcoming budget will have $100,000 to work on some type of pilot program that will continue to address our concerns about that. Another key lifeblood to, to quality of life in our community is our park system. And one of the most exciting developments on the horizon is a new southeast park. We've got 180 acres down there that we've now added almost an additional 80 acres to with the addition of the Lockwood property. And you see up on the screen a, a, the preliminary design concept for that park. The northern portion will have Robinson Lake and the Lockwood property. And then you've got uh, the remainder of, of the park, which has a neighborhood park elements. It's got trails, canoe launch, uh, pickleball court, uh, basketball courts, volleyball, uh, the splash pad, and Franklin's first inclusive playground. Uh, a great addition. Uh, along with that, 10 uh, rectangular shaped uh, recreation fields, sports fields for football, lacrosse, rugby, which are all growing sports with lots of demands and uh, really help serve one of our fastest growing sections of the community in terms of uh, providing vital park services there. Franklin's put a lot of emphasis on planning for the future as far as our water needs. Uh, I'm talking about the integrated water resource plan which uh, no one else in the state has done uh, and probably one of the few in the south and this plan identified the needs for water, uh, how we use the river, stormwater and also our wastewater and that projected a plan for the next 25 to 30 years. Currently the upgrades that we needed at the water plant are occurring. It's going to replace aging infrastructure uh, with new technology. It's going to provide the city with a more diversified uh, water resource. It's going to increase the level of service to our customers and also be more efficient, reliable and sustainable. Uh, our wastewater facility uh, is currently out to bid. Uh, currently, when we look at the age technology we have at our wastewater plant and the capacity we have, uh, we're told that we have one of the, if not the best, but one of the best uh, wastewater facility operations in the state of Tennessee. Uh, the new plan uh, that's out to bid will address new technology uh, that'll end up with a Class A uh, biosolid at the end of a s exceptional quality. It'll meet the needs of our community hopefully for the next 30 years. Good news for the citizens of Franklin is that we have a hundred million dollar loan from the state revolving loan fund at 1.47 percent uh, which is cheap money and uh, helps us uh, do this project. Uh, the main thing is the current plant is aged old technology and we're replating, replacing it with state-of-the-art technology and equipment. Uh, how are we doing financially, Eric? Well, we're doing well. Uh, a couple key points to talk about. Uh, the city does maintain a AAA bond rating, the very highest bond rating you receive, both from Standard & Poor's and Moody's, which puts us in the very top echelon of cities across uh, the United States. Uh, we just released our recommended budget about a week and a half ago, and it is, uh, of course, a balanced budget. It has no tax increases in it, 
uh, which is good news for everybody in this room. But a couple key elements in that that I want to touch on. First, we've worked really hard over the past year to look at where we are with the market in terms of our city employee team, that we are paying uh, at the right place in the market, that we're highly competitive. One of the things that we've uh, heard recently, the unemployment rate in Williamson County is just a little bit over 2%. That means it's a tight labor market. You, when you have good people, you need to hold on to them. You want to be very, uh, a very attractive place to work. And part of that is making sure we're in line with the market. So we have adjustments in that budget that help put us where we need to be and, and reward appropriately our, our team members uh, compared to the market. We also have additional funding for neighborhood street resurfacing and sealing and sidewalk construction and sidewalk repair. In fact, about a million dollars more than we had just a year or so ago. Uh, and that's a, that's a great uh, initiative there. Also supported by our Invest Franklin initiative, which has additional funding for major street resurfacing as well. So lots of good progress there. While we don't have a tax increase, we do have a slight bump moving about $1.50 a month in uh, the sanitation rate for, for neighborhood or community uh, recycling and uh, residential uh, trash pickup. Uh, but th the good news on that, though, is about 10 years ago, we were subsidizing that operation by $4.5 million of general fund tax dollars. This new budget has no subsidy from the general fund at all. So the rate payer dollars are supporting that. So that's, that's good progress and, and compliment our team for their work there. And finally this morning, we want to talk a little more about quality of life in Franklin. You know, I, I think I often hear people say, let's shut the doors and don't let anybody else in. And I think some previous mayors tried that 30 years ago, and as you see, it didn't work. Uh, we talked with Alderman and Vice Mayor Margaret Martin about the changes in Franklin. Well, if you're either growing or you're regressing, uh, and I think we don't want to regress, we don't want to, we don't want to go backwards. And when people say, we don't want Franklin to change, listen to who those people are. Most of them have come within the last 10 to 15 years or fewer years than that. And they think Franklin's always been this way. Well, it hasn't. I can remember the, the chicken factory downtown, uh, the, the day the the bridge fell with all the chickens, we all had fried chicken for supper that night when chickens flew all over the town. You know, that's that's the kind of thing we were accustomed to. And every time it rained heavily, the the uh, Highway 96, Murfreesboro Road flooded. You couldn't get across the bridge until the water went down. So Franklin has not always been what it is today. But it's very difficult for people who have just come in the last few years to realize that. As you can see, growth and quality of life can coexist with uh, growth. And many newcomers to Franklin have made Franklin what it is today. And what is Franklin? Franklin's a great place to live. It's an it city. It's a it place city. to be. Yeah. Uh, you see up on the screen some of those lists, and we jokingly say we've never met a top 10 list we didn't like. Uh, but uh, they are a reflection of the quality of life of our community. You see a great place to live, great place for job seekers to start a business. Uh, our high performing school districts in, in Williamson County Schools and Franklin Special School District. Uh, one of the things I'd like to highlight, we, we've talked about this 30 year look back. You know, Money Magazine has been rating cities as, as the best places to live in America for probably about 30 years or more. Uh, it's kind of the, the gold standard for that, that type of rating. And about 10 years ago, we were rated number 62 on that list. Pretty good. Uh, then we moved up to 50 and 41. And this past fall, they released their list, and Franklin was number four on that list. So we're pretty proud of that. Yes. And, and number two in the South. We still think we're a little underrated, but that's okay. We won't, we won't dwell on that. But uh, it's about quality of life, and it's about doing a great job and, and, and building a community we're all proud of and, a, and a, place, a great place to call home. Well, you know, this didn't happen by accident. We all know that. You know, we, we know it happened because of the dedicated professionals that work for the city of Franklin. Uh, the people that were here 30 years ago and the people that work for us today that you've seen their booths in the back. 
Uh, we also know that the Board of Mayor and Aldermen has made a lot of important decisions. And I think if we look back, most of those decisions were focused on not something for today or, or tomorrow, but they were focused on things that are going to happen 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road. So my hope now would be with your help that we'll continue to grow the city and have great planning. You know, our children that return to Franklin, people that continue to move to Franklin, uh, are interested in the same quality of life that we have. And we want to continue to make those decisions that plan for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road and not be short-sighted and just focus on uh, what is happening tomorrow. You know, we live in a very, very blessed community. We are so lucky. And with your help, Franklin is going to continue to be that place where people want to raise their family, where they want to work, where they want to start their business, where they want to worship, where they want to pray. So I applaud each and every one of you. Thanks for coming today, and we look forward to your help. God bless. Hey, Mayor, I think it's time to hop back in the time machine and see what's going to happen in the future. I agree. Let's go, Eric. I think we got the DeLorean for about 15 more minutes, so let's go. <laughs>